can see they do this all over New Mexico. These little chilies that hang all over the place. Sometimes they make them into like decorative wreaths and things. But here's uh, the restaurant. It is uh, like so many around here, a uh, old Pueblo building. Always pretty cool. So my friend Chris and I had done a road trip last year through Santa Fe. And uh, we stopped by Santa Fe and uh, ate at this restaurant called Casa Chimaya. And uh, we thought it was really cool how they uh, made the guacamole right at your table like this. And uh, the food was really great and we just thought it was really cool making the guacamole right like that. And uh, it was the best guacamole I'd ever had. So uh, we decided this year when we came back and just, uh, had to go to the balloon when festival that uh, we needed to try this uh, guacamole again. Yeah. There, I mean, it's, so uh, it's here we are. But it's not quite, not quite. In yeah, it's not like in the town. Onions, jalapenos, um, tomatoes, cilantro, and salt. I think everything yeah, but maybe fun. light jalapeno. You like jalapenos? Yeah. Okay. Maybe just a little lighter in the jalapenos. Okay, I'm going to smash this up really quick. We know you guys are obviously the best guacamole over here. Are a lot of the other restaurants here, do they do this? I don't think so. I'm okay. not sure if anybody else does. Okay. I don't know. Now we're pretty sure after trying the last time, we we're pretty sure you guys are obviously the best. Yeah. Right everybody now. does their own kind of version, but I don't think, I don't know how many people do it at the table. Yeah. Yeah, we thought that was really cool. Good for all opinions? I think so. There's a little bit on there. You guys come up for the balloon fiesta all the time? This is our first time. Now you hear him uh, mention about the balloon fiesta, and you see it's such a huge event. We're in Santa Fe, which is a great city in it, of itself. It has awesome sites like uh, the first church in America and uh, the Loretto staircase, which I'll explain about a little bit later. It's an amazing place, but even he's talking about it from another city because it's really quite a spectacular event. And like, of course, that's down in Albuquerque. And, uh, we're here in Santa Fe, so yeah. I mean, everybody in, comes from everywhere to see it all across the world. That's pretty amazing. I like to do it from a third person perspective. Look at that. Is that good or what? That's so good. Yeah, buddy. Mm hmm. Mm. Try one, Chris. Yeah. Is this good as last time? Yummy, yummy. Mm. You tell me what you think. Good stuff? Yeah, it's a thumbs up. Chicken tacos, not too shabby. just a residential area in Santa Fe and again the homes even the shopping mall almost everything is built in this Pueblo style architecture which is really cool it's just something you don't see in other parts of the country other parts of the world it's, it's really interesting it's fascinating I like it something different and you can see even outside the house, they've got a big thing of chilies hanging down there. Pretty cool stuff. Right. Here, coming up on the famous Loretto Chapel. Most famous for its spiral staircase that seems to defy physics. 
should not be able to have a staircase like this, especially built in the 1800s. So here I am inside the Loretto Chapel and in a second I'm going to turn around here and you will see the Loretto Staircase which is the most famous part of it. Basically the short version of the legend goes that it was built, the choir loft up top there was built without a staircase at all and the nuns didn't have a way to get up there because they couldn't climb up the ladder in their outfit. And so they prayed to St. Joseph the Carpenter to come and build a staircase for them and a mysterious man showed up one day and he built this and he left without any asking for money, any thank you, anything like that. The nuns believed it was St. Joseph. The stairway itself is quite spectacular. It uh, has a lot of things that shouldn't be. The wood came from far away. Nobody knows how it got there. Uh, it has no nails or glue used. It has no central column or support beams. So. It really is a physical wonder, and it's uh, been shown on many mysterious shows, and uh, even there's been a movie made about it. Uh, it's quite an interesting legend, and people come from all over to uh, try to check it out. It's quite baffling even nowadays, but especially for the 1800s, it really doesn't make a lot of sense. Pretty amazing. Next door to the Loretto Chapel, they have built the Loretto Inn, which is a hotel. And this is just right next door. It is a really cool looking hotel. Right there you can see the Loretto Chapel, the back of it there, or the side of it. side of the hotel here and don't ask me why because it is quite warm outside but they've got a fire going anyway really weird but yeah it's kind of cool looking in here the San Miguel Church oldest church structure in the USA original adobe walls and altar were built by Tlaxon Indians from Mexico under the direction of Francisco Padres in 1610 Oldest church in America, this is pretty cool. Right next door is the oldest house in America. Here's the side of the church. That's a lot of Okay. small, that's for sure. 1646 house.
centuries in the wall of me. And underneath it, fine. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Church is in here. And look at that. Schnazzy. The Cathedral Basilica of St. Francis of Assisi. Even the parking garage. It's like this. And what's crazy is I got to the oldest church over there, San Miguel, at about 2.58 to find out that the inside closes at 3 o'clock and they already close it. So you couldn't go in, but I see this one is still open. But it was crazy to me to be closed that early. 